What's up, everybody? Today, I'm super excited to announce my guest. He's a native of Covington, PA, an all-MAC Freedom second team member and a good friend of mine, James Brown Jr. How's it going, my guy? I'm good, man. How are you? How are you? Just living life to the fullest out here in this quarantine in Erie, PA, you know. Yeah, man. No, I feel that, dude. I feel that. So uh, first and foremost, you know, we know each other. So I know the answer to most of these questions. You know, we got to hang out in Erie last year. It was lit. I actually had Josh Lester on the show last week. So, uh, you know, we got to reminisce a little bit there too. But uh, first and foremost, why don't you tell us a little bit about your hometown of Covington, PA, and what makes it so special? Um, Well, obviously, man, it's it's not well known. um, But it is outside of Scranton, which I think everybody knows Scranton, especially from the office. So, um, growing up, you know, I spent a lot of time in Scranton, um, and there's actually like a lot of, um, influence from people from like New York, New Jersey and stuff like that. Cause they moved to like that Pocono area. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of water parks, um, ski resorts, things like that, man. So if you're into that stuff and, you know, I definitely am, I'm a snowboarder. Um, it was really fun to grow up and there's actually, um, a lot of really good athletes and, uh, people in all different kinds of activities and and all that 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 come out of the, the area so it's pretty cool to be a part of it um and just to represent them man you know yeah I actually had a soccer offer full ride offer to go play for Lackawanna and I never did okay. I never took it so that's yeah. that's pretty that's in Scranton right it's pretty close. yeah 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 man yeah but uh so tell us a little bit about your recruiting process how you went from uh North Pocono High School to Wilkes University just kind of take us into that so, man, it was um, it was a pretty crazy process, you know. Um, I started playing travel ball my freshman year of high school, and I played um, in 18U, the highest. I never really played my, my age. So I got a lot of decent exposure um, as a young kid, first starting high school. Um, and I really think that it, it, it helped me to land where I needed to go. You know, I was a late bloomer, and I did, I really didn't hit my full potential even in college until, like, my junior, senior year. You know, I, I, I mean, I graduated high school at 5'2". Um, I, was, I, I was pretty jacked up, though, for my size. I was in really good shape. I was, like, 152 pounds. You know, um, I, I always played a lot of sports, and um, one of them was gymnastics. I was a gymnast for a long time. So that really helped me out with body control and just understanding and being able to, you know, generate power of being a smaller guy. Um, and I played with a lot of really good dudes growing up that played in college as well um, that I grew up with, which was which was great. So I I, I guess um, when it came to like more of like the recruiting process part of it, man, um, you know, I, I was hit up by a lot of smaller schools. I had a lot of offers to play at a lot of smaller schools. Um, I, I had, you know, some some walk on opportunities that I could have took at, you know, small division one or, or even like bigger division twos and stuff like that but um my heart was set on going to Lackawanna actually funny that you were talking about that before and I was um I was getting ready to you know make a commitment there and everything and just some things happened uh ended up not being a really good fit for me academically and things like that and I um a coach he was at the sales university uh Matt Holland who I I honestly don't know where he's coaching at right now um but he got the job at Wilkes and um, as, you know, everything was kind of falling through with lack, I ended up there. He got, got me a spot, and he called me up, and he said, hey, man, I really like what you do. Um, I think you're really good talent, and I want you to get an opportunity to play baseball and get a great education. So come on through, man. And I checked out the campus and everything, um, and it was real unorthodox compared to all my other visits, you know, because it was just so fast. It happened so fast, in and out. Like, my, my – uh, my tour through campus was actually at night with him after hours. It was like eight o'clock at night. Um, and it was, it was, it was really funny. You know, it was just very unorthodox and, and uh, I honestly wouldn't have it any other way, man. So it was pretty cool. That's like that shady unofficial visit stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't like unofficial, 
because like he had a camp that was going on that was going to start that night. So I don't think it was like actually eight o'clock. It was a little earlier, but it was still dark. It was winter time, and it just wasn't the time of the day that you would expect it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it, it was. Everything was really cool. It was just, it was just different. So it was just, you know, it was really, it was, it just caught you off guard. So it was really, yeah. it was really cool though. You know. Yeah. Who's the best player you've ever played with, and then who's the best you played against? Oh man. Uh, like anywhere that's tough. Anywhere. Yeah. Um, honestly, one of the best guys being around, man. It that's tough being, with all the guys in Erie, man. That's really hard. <laughs> that's really hard. I mean, my. I think all around as a teammate, competitor, um, and just going out there and doing his job day in and day out, man, would probably be guy that I was with this last year and it was Alex Fiedo. Um, you know, that guy is just um I, I mean I don't truly know how he's viewed um by everybody else, but like for me, you know, and I didn't even know his background until I met him. Um but I just think just the way he handles himself and he carries himself and um you know brings people in um and, and just makes them feel at home. He was he was awesome. And you know, obviously he was, he's, I, I would assume, you know, just based where he was picked, you know, he's viewed very highly by, by uh, the Tigers organization and as he should be, you know, cause he works hard and he does everything that he's supposed to do. And he goes out there and he competes every day. Um, and then a guy that I played against, man, man, oh man. Uh, that's tough. I might have to come back to that one if that's cool. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, gotta think I played against a lot of pretty good dudes, man. You know, yeah, so I know. I yeah, I know. Alex always like even just like me, bro. Like I'm just like a mascot, bat boy, like whatever the hell they need me to do. Just like you know, helping you guys out in the clubhouse yeah. and shit. And like even he treated yeah. me hella nice. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to go out of his way and talk to me. And he still does. No, nah, man. Yeah, he's not. He's not. He doesn't view himself better than anybody. Yeah. He's, he's really cool, you know. But the, like all the there's a lot of guys in that locker room that were like that. You know? Everybody, and, bro. Everyone was and, so nice. And it was it was really cool to see that. You know, that's just. Yeah. I guess I spent a lot, a lot of time with Alex. So that's my guy. You know what I mean? That's yeah. my guy to pick, you know? Yeah. So, but don't get me wrong. All of them were awesome. Oh, so. It was honestly, I've been, I've been at the Seawolves for, this would have been my sixth season. It's not looking too good now, but. Uh, no, I know. I know. <laughs> we'll yeah. touch on that a little bit later, but this would have been yeah, my sixth did. season. And uh, like th that last year's team, like from everybody, the coaching staff, all the way, like yeah. everybody, bro, super yeah. nice. And they don't have to be, yeah. you know, but they were no. awesome. Yeah. Um, so going back to your college days, you lit it up, bro, at Wilkes hitting 306 in your career, 133 hits, 87 runs, four dingers, 83 ribbies, 24 stolen bases, amongst other things. What kind of pro ball interest did you have after college? Um, so, you know, it started my sophomore year. I was getting, you know, getting scouted a little bit here and there, talking to some scouts. Um, and then really after – my senior year, man, I was. Bro, your senior had year was a decent crazy. amount of private workouts. Yeah, it was crazy, and um, everything was going really well. And then all of a sudden, I broke my ankle. Um, so I was getting ready to go out for a workout um, with an indie ball team, which I they are under new ownership. I don't even know what league they're in anymore. Um, I don't even know the name they go under, um, and. It just kind of, you know, everything kind of fell apart. So then I had the opportunity to go play um, overseas and be like an independent pro player overseas, man. So I was in Europe playing for the 2018 season. Um, and that really helped me to actually get with the Tigers organization. Because when I went out there, I played really well. Um, I had really good stats, about 389. Um, I got to play against some national teams, hit some bombs, you know, and, and just really showed um, – some teams back here and some, just some guys in general that, you know, kick a play, you know? Um, and that's all, that's all I want to do. I just want to play and just help team win. So, um, yeah, man, and that's kind of where I'm at right now as well. So I, I was having a lot of, um, a lot of interest overseas, you know, um, a little less past in year? the U S yeah, just this past year. And before the, with the Tigers, man, I was going to go out to Germany. I was getting ready to sign with the team in Germany um, I was going to go there, experience their culture. Um, I have some teammates that played out there, um, and they love it, man. They said it's competitive. It's good baseball. And uh, 
it's a hell of a time. It's a hell of a time. And just experiencing their culture and seeing how they live, man, is, is really cool experience, you know? Yeah. So then kind of like piggybacking off that, you know, you spent last season as the bullpen catcher for the Erie Sea Wolves, which is a team I've obviously worked for for years, double A for the Detroit Tigers. How does, how do you like necessarily like become a bullpen catcher? Like what was like the conversation like? And then the second part of that question, like what was it like catching for guys? Like we kind of mentioned earlier, Casey Mize, Baedo, Tariq Skubal, Matt Manning, like, just kind of mm-hmm. basically just break down your experience as a bullpen catcher and how you became one. Yeah. So, um, so how it happened, like I was saying, you know, playing over in Europe and everything, it really helped me out to, after getting hurt, like get my name back out there with some people. Um, and, and somebody that has seen me play, you know, since I'm a kid um, and really just thought I deserved an opportunity Um made a phone call and long story short, I ended up down in spring training for a workout, man. Um, And then everything kind of fell through there because of the weather down there, but they knew I was down there, the um, Tigers and I was there. um, And we kind of had a mutual friend and they're like, Hey man, listen, you know, we know your history. We know that, you know, you can ball, you can play a little bit, you know, you can play a little bit, but we're not trying to really bring anybody on that, hasn't been drafted by our organization and things like that or we haven't trade for which 100 percent, i get it you know i get it coming from a small school um you know low level um pro experience and stuff overseas compared to where where they're at i get it you know um but they were like hey you know we want to try to give you an opportunity and they just wanted to see me catch i was able to handle some guys and the rest is history man they brought me on and they um, just like, hey, dude, you know, th- this is what you got to do. You got to be a workhorse for the pitchers. You got to be a workhorse for the, um, you know, for, for the roster catchers and, and, and do your thing. So it, it was really um, an unorthodox situation, you know, kind of like how it was for me to go, to go play at, at Wilkes in college. And uh, it was really out of the blue. And like I was saying, I was getting ready to go back overseas when it happened, man. So uh, it was just – a great experience and I couldn't be more happy that it happened because it was something that I needed to happen being a utility guy mostly my whole life you know I, yeah I had the ability to catch, catching guys like that you know double A's got insane talent man it's the best talent in the world before they you know go to trip triple A which they call the mini show and then obviously the big time man the bigs you know so um it, it, it's really eye-opening and it just shows you that the world has so many good baseball players, man, that could compete at a high level and that are insane, that are, that are awesome. But then there's those guys too, you know what I mean? And they're at a different level, and it was just really cool to be a part of. And catching those guys is just, you know, um, it, it, it's it's an experience you'll never forget. And they really make you, 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 you better be ready, you know, you better be ready. So and that's yeah because yeah. you were you were oh. catching like I think at one point like we were ranked like the number one like minor league pitching staff and like you're catching yeah. those dudes every day, so yeah man that kind of um I guess I'll skip the next question because you kind of talked about it but uh yeah. um so that kind of just piggybacks into my next one actually you're kind of good at this you're like a pro pro at podcast already but uh what's a typical day like as a bullpen catcher like how do you like what time do you get to the ballpark what do you like what are your daily tasks basically stuff like that yeah so so for me man like you know for a lot of guys when you become a bullpen catcher you're usually a little bit older and like for me I was turning 24 I was 24 during the season you know and I'm like super in player mode I know like as a bullpen catcher you're not truly like you're not truly like a player, everyday kind of player, but like you got to be a ball, you know, you got to be a ball player to be able to catch guys, be able to throw like that all the time and be able to just, you know, be in in the pen and, and, and hold up for however many games we played in the minors plus all the spring training, you know, because it's every day, every day. It's constant. So um, for me, it was like a little bit, it was a little bit different compared to like a typical bullpen catcher. Like I would get there early. I'd get a good workout in with the strength trainer, man. Um, so I, I, if we had if we had early work, three o'clock, man, I'm there twelve thirty, 
you know, I'm, I'm there 1230. I grind a little bit on my own. Um, if there's ever any time, get my working in, in the cage. If there was um, an opportunity to that day, I would get that done and then uh, chill, drink some protein, get a good meal in, whatever the case may be, get out there for three o'clock, you know, get a couple long talk sessions in with some of the guys because everybody's on their own thing, you know what I mean? So um, I'd have to uh, long toss with the guy whose pen day it is. Then sometimes, you know, a reliever wants to long toss a little bit and other guys don't want to. So then I have to hop in and do that after I catch. And then you got to catch guys, touch a field. They just want to get something going before the game, make sure they got a feel for their pitches, you know, because it's a long year. Sometimes you you run into those those obstacles, man, um, and those walls that, that come up and you just lose feel, you know. So you got to be there and, and really work through that. So you catching – you're doing a lot of throwing, man, and catching like six guys potentially before a game. Plus, usually it's like three or four for the game. So after that – um, you go in, you get your meal, you shower up, you try to relax a little bit, go in, um, and you just try to learn, watch film on other guys, the guys that you're facing today, this and that. And uh, then you suit it up, man. You throw your uniform on, get your gear, and you go out there, man. And you just you just wait till it's your turn to warm somebody up. So, yeah, man, that's that's a typical day. That's a that's typical day. Up. So did uh, yeah. catching those guys and whatnot just, uh, you know, you know, like you were catching guys who are going to be in the show in the next few years. Did that make you like really like kind of yeah. miss playing in games like as an everyday player? Or was it just you were so busy focused on that that like you didn't really think about it? Yeah, no, man. Like it was um, actually it was really, really hard. And, and mentally, you know, there was times where I was just I would mentally get so upset, you know, because I was just not ready to hang it up. And I knew I had opportunities to go play in Europe. And I potentially had opportunities to go and um, try out for some indie teams in front of, you know, coaches and stuff like that. And it was one of those things, man, where the opportunity to, to be around those guys, you know, no matter how well I, I can play, you know, or like you don't know. You don't know how you're going to play. So then you may not ever get an opportunity to – to be around guys like that, you know? So it was something that like, I really felt like I had to do. And it was, I gained so much knowledge as a catcher. And because in college, man, I, I was converted to an outfielder. I could run a little bit, do this and that. So I was, I was just, I was pretty much just an outfielder, man. Um, that I just, it, 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 it was tough. I would fight that emotion every day. And um, I think that's also another reason like why I worked so hard you know, like in the weight room still, this and that, like, because I knew that I had these opportunities this year, you know, so next year, I think I'm going to have them. I think they're going to be there. And actually, you know, sure as hell, season ended, man, I had the opportunity to go play winter ball in Guatemala. Um, there are some things, it's a newer winter league. I, I didn't go, you know, there was just some things that didn't pan out with, with the pay and all that. So I didn't, I didn't go. Um, but for this upcoming year before the all COVID-19 hit and stuff, man, I was talking to teams to go play in Europe again. Um, I was planning on going and playing with the International Stars team in Prague Baseball Week, um, which I was I played with in 2018, and we won the championship. We beat the Czech Republic national team um, in the championship in their hometown and everything, man. So um, definitely just it, it was hard mentally. It was definitely hard mentally, but those guys – just seeing how they carry themselves and how they work, man, it, you can't show up and nobody, it's not that nobody cares how you feel. If you, if you're feeling emotional, it's like, there's not, there's no room for that, you know? So you got to be ready and you got to do your thing so that they can do their thing. So if you don't handle yourself, they can't handle business. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So like you're just as important as an everyday catcher, because if they don't trust you to throw to them, how can they get their work in, you know? So you just got to block it out and just go for it, man, and just know you're getting better and just trust your process. You know, everybody's different. Bro, you're selling yourself short a little bit too because you're hands down one of the coolest dudes like I've ever gotten to talk to. And like, Thanks, like you're man. just hella friendly around the whole clubhouse, bro. And so like Thanks, man. You, you had more of an impact than just being a bullpen catcher, bro. I can tell you that. Like I've had players tell me just one-on-one -on -one how dope you are, bro. So 
I've Thanks, never man. told you that, but like your impact Thank was you. definitely Thank deeper you. than just catching. Thank you, but, uh, man. Yeah, man. For sure. It. So keep your head up, bro. You going you got this. But uh, so yeah, towards the end of last season, bro. You know, we both lost a great friend in Chase Numata. Um, super yeah. sad, obviously. Um, yeah. You know, we like to call him Numi, obviously around the clubhouse. He's just so, such a great guy, bro. And yeah. uh, you know, I, I was yeah. there. Yeah, I was there helping like load the buses that day, and I remember you know, being called into the office saying, like, I can't answer any reports or questions or anything if they were to happen. Um, and I remember you came in, bro, and you kind of, like, broke the news to pretty much everybody who hadn't heard because you were, like, watching the news or something and you saw it um, and you recognized yeah. the skateboard. Um, so can you, like, kind of tell us what the clubhouse was like and then kind of, like, what the bus ride to Akron was like? I'm sure it wasn't wasn't a great situation. But... No, it was it was pretty tough. Yeah, man, because like nobody knew, and at, like I was I was at breakfast at um um one of the spots there in Erie that I would go to all the time, man. Uh, I was at Dave's Diner. That's where I was at, and um, it's early because we got to get there early, so it's like seven forty-five, eight eight a.m. You know, the bus was leaving at ten. I got my stuff packed and everything, and all of a sudden, you know, I hear on the news. Um, teenage kid skateboard accident. Hey man, I never seen nobody skateboarding except really knew me. You know, I, I ride a little bit myself. Um, I'm uh, there's some other people on the team I knew that road, you know, and they're talking, they're not showing anything. And I just kind of like, I just saw the skateboard, I saw the wheels, and I was like, nah, 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 nah. And then they like showed, didn't show him but it was from a distance you could just see them like putting the stretcher in the ambulance man and I recognized his vans like I just I, I could tell by the way he was laying down everything I knew it so like I was rushing around and I actually ran into a guy on the team Drew Carlton he was getting ready to walk to the field and they lived nearby nobody knew anything you know because everybody's getting ready to move out it's the end of the year everybody's in their business, you know, so it was just like out of the blue. Nobody's seen knew me. Nobody's answering. He's not answering calls, this and that. And then uh, I got to the field and I forget how I heard like that it was confirmed. And it was me and a couple other guys that heard it. And then, you know, we we're telling people and uh, we get to we, we, we get on the bus and it was just it was quiet. It was quiet and but like everybody believed it was gonna be okay you know we kept getting news while we were in Akron too like hey he's doing a little better here oh this night was worse oh we think he's gonna pull through this and that and then you know the last game when they told everybody man it was that was that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever heard um it's definitely top three like hardest losses I've ever had in my life me too, man. And uh, it, 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 if you know knew me, man, you know you'd understand why it's so hard. Um, he's been in multiple organizations with the Phillies, the Yankees, and then the Tigers, and he's just he is actually the reason why I stuck around to be the bullpen catcher, man. Because I was in spring training, I didn't want to do it. I, I was getting good offer to, like I was saying, we keep talking about going overseas. And he was like, "Hey, man, like, when are you gonna do this?" I'm like, yeah, you can play, but when are you gonna be around here? Like, what if you get that opportunity to play here? I was like, "You're right, man." You know. And then just being around him every day, he he taught me so much because, again, I was an outfielder primarily in college. Like, catching these guys is not easy, especially if you are a catch, like a full time catcher. Well, me being a utility guy and not catching all that much the last couple of years, like, I was struggling at first, man, and he really helped me. And uh, it just, like, shows what kind of teammate he is. So if he was able to do that for me, you know what I mean? Imagine what he's doing for everybody else that he's, he's out there and he's going to war with on the field. You know what I mean? He's just that – he was just that kind of guy that we're here to, we're, we're here to play baseball, man. We're around baseball be happy let's enjoy this man because a lot of people don't get that opportunity man so um it was it was dude it was super hard I've never seen so many people devastated devastated man like you would have thought we all lost our dog that day like it was 
horrible, man. It was horrible. The world lost one of the best people. Um, he just he had a clue, man. He treated everyone with respect. Uh, it didn't matter if he even knew you, man. You know, he uh, he really was a great dude, and he just wanted everybody to be happy. He just yeah. include everybody in that happiness. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like I, I actually remember, like, um, and it's I I tell this story a lot because you know. As far as like game day employees go, I was probably like really, I was probably the tightest with Numi as far as like, you know, normal yeah. game day employees. And yeah. actually, a lot of times, you know, people ask me and they're like, bro, like, what is one of your last memories with him? And like, I go to that day when like you and Numi actually you came up to like the team shop. And bro, like, we were just, yeah. oh, yeah, there. the day before. Yeah, mm -hmm. the day before. Yeah. Bro, we were, we were just literally talking about like the future, how we wanted to come back to the Tigers, you both of you. And bro, yeah, bro. And literally, yeah. bro, that night, he actually sent me a DM. I have his bat and gloves right here. And he was like, hey, it's the last message I ever got from him, bro. And he goes, hey, man, I have my, I signed that bat. It's in my locker for you. And there's some gloves and there's a card and stuff too, bro. Like, he Yeah, had like, man, like you see, like that's, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. man. And he was that guy for – dude, like he just knew that, you know, I cared so much and I wanted to get better, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And he would work with me, man, and he would just tell me about how he struggled when he first started catching. And he's just that guy, man, that he just cares about everybody. He would – bro, I remember the one day I show up and I made a comment on Instagram on, like, some shades. Next thing you know, five days later, they're sitting in my locker. Like, that's the kind of guy he is, man. He just takes care of everybody. You know what I mean? He just, he just cares. He wants everybody to be happy, and he enjoys – he just enjoyed life. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, man, it's just, it's hard. He, he's hard to talk about. You know, I don't yeah. ever mind talking about him, but like, there's just so much. Yeah. You, words cannot describe Chase they really can't. They can't. You have to, it, you have to experience how nice he was, dude, yeah. and how respectful of a guy he was to everybody. Dude, it, it's insane because bro it's like you can't even like compare him to anybody as far as like niceness no. goes bro like you can't like he's like his own nope. person bro like you genuinely no. do have to experience it to like even be able you to have to experience it man it's you crazy have to experience it he's yeah yeah dude the yes. world lost they lost one of the best guys to ever walk this planet yeah and it was just it was crazy I'm, i mean i still remember talking to him before it happened like we were texting back and forth and uh he was like yeah man i'm gonna head home soon like i was laying in bed i'm in bed early you know getting ready for tomorrow and he, yeah man it's just it's just crazy it's just crazy yeah and and you know it's sad that nobody truly knows what happened except for him yeah you know, I know there was a lot of bullshit reports and shit that came out afterwards too in Erie, and it was just so fucking like it just pissed me off, bro, because they didn't know. Yeah, shit. man, like, and you just don't. Yeah, you just don't know. Is it was that stuff true? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you just don't know. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks, and it's unfortunate. But the biggest thing is, man, is just trying to like everybody's been. Saying, since it happened, you got to live like new me, man. Just exactly. be happy and treat people with respect. And that's another reason why, you know, we won't get into it, but why the world's in the predicament it's in because nobody wants to respect anybody, you know? Yeah. Nobody's respecting people where they come from, uh, what, how they grew up, this and that, like take it into consideration. It's terrible, man. Everybody, you take anybody, man, you cut them open, they bleed red, right? Everybody got a heart, everybody's Facts. got teeth, everybody's got here right. we all have a brain you know what i mean yeah. we all have the same internal organs right you know it's just it's sad it's sad and unfortunately um you know the world needed more people like Numi, and that's who we lost you know a guy yeah. that that really got it and he understood what was what was real and important in the world you know right yeah, and I honestly, I know you feel the same way. I've never, like, instantly felt a connection that strong with a player or anybody. I mean, I, it's more than – he's a friend. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's a, just a brother. Yeah, bro. But, uh, yeah. yeah. 
this season actually at the Seawolves was supposed to be dedicated to him. We were going to have like a Chase Numata jersey night, like things like that yeah. over at the ballpark. Um, yeah. Due to like the coronavirus and stuff, it's not looking good for double-A baseball. So, you know, kind of what are your thoughts on like the MLB's like varying game proposals and whatnot? It's crazy. Um, Wishy-washy with well, it all the time. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very – it's very – it's different, you know. I, I, I mean – Dude, it's a, it, it without fans, the league's nothing. Just like every professional league, you know, around the world. If you don't have fans, you have nothing. You don't have sports because where does your money come from? People that love the sport that they're watching or that they grew up playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think, yeah, we got to – like there, ha- there should 110% be a season. But, again, and I actually really have tried to distance myself from hearing all the – because I think it's, a lot of it's baloney, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't like a lot of the talk that's been going on, I guess. So, you know, quarantine has been a time for me to, like, really – I know who I am. I know who I am. But really focus on myself even more, even yeah. more. You know what I mean? Just like I feel like everybody should focus on themselves and better themselves, this and that. But um, without getting off topic, I just think that it's kind of crazy that you hear guys that have been in, in the majors for so long, man. They've been in the show for so long, and they don't want to play for, like, the big of a pay cut. When you got guys, dude, I have some best friends that are great ball players, man. Uh, they're sitting at home with, you know, 92, 93 sitting in their back pocket. Pitchers, dude, I know, know them. I've seen them. I've played against them. Um, they play for fifty bucks, and you have guys like you have guys that are complaining that they're not going to get paid all their money. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's that's where it's it's just really upsetting. It's really upsetting, man. And like, I honestly just don't know what to say about it other than. If you're playing for money, yes, money is so important. You should get paid a ton because it's so hard to do it at that level. But it's not about the money. If you're doing it for the money, man, then it's then it's not it's not a true love, and you're you're. Yeah. And that's 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 my comment on it, man. Other than that, I I, I hope that there's some sort of season. Uh, baseball is definitely with all the people that play it here in the U.S. and around the world. I would still say it's kind of dying in the U.S. a tiny bit compared to other sports, you know. And it'd just be a shame if they didn't play. And then you know the NFL or whatever is gonna pick right back up where it started. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you know, kind of in between, you know, mm-hmm. your uh, careers like last season, and then kind of just. More like not really recently because you kind of started this like right after the season ended. Yeah. You you hopped in a band called Meet Me on Marcy, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 And so you're like you're doing that. You're a DJ. You're doing all sorts of stuff in the music industry. It sounds great. Yeah. I'm tuning in for sure. Hey, um, how's that you, been going for you, bro? Um, it's been going great, man. So when I graduated college, long story short, I um, growing up, I was a uh, music machine and I just love it I love it so much I've been playing drums since I'm like 11 or 12 um I played all through school bands orchestras you know ensemble, all kinds of ensembles whatever I was available for in between sports um so when I, when I went to college I was in the jazz band at Wilkes I was a drummer there um and then when I graduated um my brother was he's a professional dancer and he was in New York but he just didn't want to be in the business anymore man he just and like how everything was flowing and stuff like that. So came home and we started our own company. It's like a performing arts type of company. It's called the Brown Initiative. So we put on different types of shows with uh, dance, um, dance academies and, and studios in our area, this and that. Um, we do a lot of fundraising shows, thing, things of that nature to help out other programs and to get our name out there. Um, and we do a lot of live music with it. 
so there's a house band for the shows, which I drum for. Uh, our guitar player, he plays, obviously, was the guitar player. Uh, my sister and my brother do some vocals. And then we were getting our now rhythm guitarist and pianist. Um, and then a bass player that we have in our band now. And it just kind of formed from, a, like, a little house band, you know, for shows into a full-blown and that plays from pop punk to R&B to funk, hip hop, classic rock, country. Do we play it all? Um, and we actually were gigging out a decent amount before, um, before you know, the whole virus hit and everything. But um, yeah, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. We actually just practiced for the first time uh, on Saturday since since COVID happened, and it's been a blast, dude. It's been a yeah. blast. That's what's up. Things are starting to open up again. I can't wait. So Yeah, man, I know. I'm hoping that all we, we were booked out for, for a lot of gigs uh, coming up for myself and then as a DJ, which, oh, I didn't answer your question about DJing. I apologize. Uh, DJing just kind of happened, man. I'm a big hip-hop fan, you know. Um, and in college, I got a turntable, uh, a decent one for like 200 bucks to learn on. You know, it's a good beginner one, and I just started – messing with it things like that and uh it just turned into something where i started doing parties uh sweet 16s um i've done a prom i've done multiple semi-formals for schools homecomings all that kind of stuff man bro i'm gonna hire uh, you to dj my wedding hey bro dj downtown's got his first wedding this fall so as long as everything goes all right man it'll be cool It'll be really cool. So I'll let you know. There'll be film. There'll be footage. Um, you can always see what we have going on for the band and for the DJing side and shows like that um, at thebrowninitiative.com. So I'll link just, it. Yeah, just link it. You can find it. It's just spelled, you know, initiative, um, the Brown Initiative. So, yeah, man. Yeah. That's what's yeah. up, man. I'm definitely going to bring you on for my wedding, though. I mean, I was going to send you an invite anyway, so you should. You might as well, yeah, <laughs> might as well get paid to be there. Hey. Yeah, bro, I'm down. I'm down. We'll get it popping. <laughs> One last question for you, my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got any advice for the young ball players out there trying to just, you know, they're grinding through high school. They may not be the tallest. They may not have a ton of offers, bro. Your story's inspiring to a lot of people, you know. Um, why don't you just give them a little bit of advice, like keep their head up. You know, you've been through a lot of shit, bro. And uh, yeah, just yeah. give them a little bit of advice. So there's always going to, and this sounds cliche, there's always people that tell you you can't. You know? There's always going to be tell you, people that tell you that you can't. But you have to believe in yourself. What do you want? You know? Um, I'm not the tallest guy. Dude, I'm barely 5'6". You know? But it's kind of like, I kind of use what, Dwayne The Rock Johnson says on all his t-shirts and stuff like that before the t-shirt line came out, you know, just be the hardest worker in the room, man. You can't you can't be discouraged because you weren't given a God-given arm. You know, you weren't given wheels to run. You weren't given all the power. But you know what you can do? You can focus on your mechanics. You can focus on being in the weight room, you know, being strict with yourself. There's a lot of things. You cannot fall into, you know, the everyday um, routine that a lot of people your age fall into. You know, yes, you have to have fun. You have to have friends. You got to go out and enjoy life. You got to learn and have your experiences. All right. But baseball has, I'm so blessed, man. It's given me the opportunity. I played my first game. In Fr in France was in like right outside of Paris, bro. It was so much fun. But how did I get there? How did baseball give me that? You have to give to the game. So you have to sell yourself to the game, married to the game, bro. You got to see the dream. You got to be the dream. You got to live it, eat it. You know what I mean? It's you just you just got to see it when you don't see it. You got to see it when other people don't see it. So many people told me I was crazy. Like, yeah, you're a great player here at this level, but I don't know, man. Like, you're undersized, this, that. Don't care. You cannot care what people say. If you if you 
care, then you lose. Yeah, you're going to get emotional. You're going to be like, oh, man, why, why do they got to hate? Why doesn't anybody want to see me eat? Everybody's got to eat, man. You know what I mean? So make yourself eat. It's, it's kind of like make yourself eat. And, you know, some days you wake up. I still wake up some days and I'm like, man, you know, I don't want to do this. But nobody cares how you feel. You know, all the, all the people that are inspiring today, you know, people that inspire me, they're not even necessarily athletes. But how did they get there? They just do it, even if they want to or not. Because there's so many days you don't want to do the process. But you do want to, for example, be on stage. You do want to be on a field. You do want to be a leader in a classroom. Well, how do you become all that stuff? You got to study. You got to hone in on your craft. You got to get in the way. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you just have to, you got to be married to that game, bro. You got to be married to it. And that's, that's my advice to people. There's not enough kids that are married to it. You got guys that I feel like a lot of guys, man, they just ride their natural ability. And that happens. And you can. You have to ride it as long as you can ride it. But if you can try to perfect it, and you're never going to be perfect. You're never going to be perfect. But you just got to go and, and be your best. Be your best every day. You don't have to be good to hustle. Yeah, facts. You know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that is James Brown Jr., my friend. Yeah. Last year's bullpen yes. catcher for brothers, man. the Erie Seawolves. No, no friends. We're brothers, man. That's what's up. Know. Real yeah. quick, before he gets off, yeah. I want to just remind everybody that all the proceeds in 2020 are going towards fighting social injustice and police brutality for the entire year of 2020. That's yeah. where all the money for this podcast is going to. Make sure you all listen. We're on iTunes, yeah. Spotify, all the good stuff. James Brown yeah. Jr., my boy Brownie, thank you so much for your time today, my guy. Hey, brother. Thank you for having me, B. For sure, for sure. We got to get you on here again. Yes, sir. Whenever. You let me know. All right. All right, All right bro. I'll talk to you. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye.